Credit to His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shula Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the worldwide Hare Krishna movement. Shula Prabhupada Ki. So let us start with some invocation prayers. You can repeat with me. You can repeat after me uh, with folded hands. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Namaskritya Narayam Namaskritya Naranchaiva Narotamam Naranchaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirae Tato Jaya Mudirae Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke, Hagavati Uttamash Loke, Hakir Bhavati Nice Tiki, Hakir Bhavati Nice Tiki. So, uh, I will start with this question which might be going on in some of your minds as to why we should uh, hear Ramakatha. What is the benefit of hearing Ramakatha? Why should I even pay attention? What is in it? What's it? What's in it for me? Like that's the fundamental question which everybody asks. So let us see how this Ramakatha is so powerful. Even just uttering the word Ram, you know, purifies us from so many sinful activities. So what is the benefit of hearing Ramakatha? I'll take one verse from uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam. It's from the ninth canto, 11th chapter, 23rd verse. It's in Sanskrit, but don't get uh, uh, scared by the Sanskrit words. Let us chant this verse. You can repeat after me. Purusho Rama Charitam. Purusho Rama Charitam. You can do better. Purusho Rama Charitam. Purusho Rama Charitam. Shravana Erupadharayan. Shravana Erupadharayan. Anshramsya Paro Rajan. Anshramsya Paro Rajan. Karma Vandher Bimuchate. Karma Vandher Bimuchate. Purusho Rama Charitam. Purusho Rama Charitam. Shravana Erupadharayan. Shravana Erupadharayan. Anshramsya Paro Rajan. Anshramsya Paro Rajan. Karma Vandher Bimuchate. Karma Vandher Bimuchate. So the benefits of hearing Ramakatha, which we will hear for some time now, there are two benefits which this verse is talking about. Purusho Rama Charitam. So when we hear the activities and the wonderful pastimes of Lord Ram, Purusho Rama Charitam, Shravanair Upadharayan. When we hear, when we pay, when we pay oral reception, the word Shravana and Upadharayan both mean the same to hear. Shravanair Upadharayan, Anshramsya Parorajan. One of the things that we all suffer from internally is the disease of envy that we have. It's not just a, a bad thing which is there inside our heart, but the Vedic literature say that it is a disease. So the disease of envy that we have when we see somebody else prospering or making more advancement in life than us, very naturally this comes. I feel jealous, I feel envious about him or her. That disease you will be able to overcome. Anshramsya paro rajan karma bandher vimuchyate. And the second benefit that we get by hearing Ramakrishna, <coughs> karma bandher vimuchyate. We will get freed from the reactions, the bondage of this material karma that we are all bound by. Very powerful. You know, imagine just by hearing Ramakatha, just by being here for 10 15 minutes, you hear two huge benefits. Anshramsya paro rajan, you will become free from the disease of envy and you'll become free from the bondage of fruitive activity. So the translation is, you can repeat after me. O King Parikshit. O King Parikshit. Anyone who orally receives. Anyone who orally receives. The narrations concerning the. The narrations concerning the. Characteristics of Lord Ramachandra's pastimes. Characteristics of Lord Ramachandra's pastimes. 
will ultimately be freed will ultimately be freed from the disease of envy from the disease of envy and thus be liberated and thus be liberated from the bondage of fruitive activities from the bondage of fruitive activities so those two benefits which i mentioned ansramsya parorajan will be freed from the disease of envy and also be liberated from the bondage of fruitive activities very powerful benefits there is a wonderful purport to this i would like someone to read loudly whoever anybody wants to read volunteer yeah. Here in this material world, everyone is envious of someone else. Even in religious life, it is sometimes found that if one devotee has advanced in spiritual activity, other devotees are envious of him. Such envious devotees are not completely free from the bondage of birth and death, as long as one is not completely free from the cause of birth and death. One cannot enter the Sanatana Dhamma or the eternal pastime of the Lord, one becomes envious because of being influenced by the designations of the body. But the liberated devotee has nothing to do with the body, and therefore he is completely on the transcendental platform. A devotee is never envious of anyone, even his enemy, because the devotee knows that the Lord is his supreme protector, he thinks, what harm can the so-called enemy do? Thus a devotee is confident about his protection. The Lord says, Ye yatha mam pradyanti tams tathiva bhajami am. Very nice. According to, the, according to the proportion of one surrender unto me, I respond accordingly. A devotee must therefore be completely free from envy, especially of other devotees. To envy other devotees is a great offense. A vantnava aparada, a devotee who constantly engages in hearing and chanting, sravana kirtana, is certainly free from the disease of envy, and thus he becomes eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. Thank you so much, Kimberly. That was very nice and loud. Very nice. Thank you. So if you see, if you um, hear this purport, Srila Prabhupada, our Acharya, he is explaining that the bondage that he was mentioning in the verse, it is the bondage of birth and death, which we all are bound. Sometimes we think, what is the bondage that you are talking about? I don't have any bondage. But it is the bondage of the cycle of repetition of birth and death. So one will get freed from the cycle of this repetition of birth and death. Imagine how powerful this is. And what is stopping us to come out of that? It is the envy in the heart. And how can we overcome that envy in the heart? He's telling that by hearing and chanting, by Shravana and Kirtana, one becomes free from the disease of envy, and thus he becomes eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. There is a verse which is mentioned in this purport, Ye yatha maam prapadyante tam statheva bhajamya. It's a very beautiful verse from Bhagavad Gita, which says, according to the proportion of one surrender unto me, I respond accordingly. As we want the Lord in our heart, as much as we want, the Lord reciprocates that much. We think I'm good, we don't need anything, I'm struggling in my life, I'll figure out myself, the Lord also doesn't intervene. But the moment we take one step towards the Lord, the Lord takes 10 steps towards us. Imagine how easy this process is, but how unfortunate we are, that you know we are struggling in our own world, in our material life, trying to figure out what should I do, how should I, what should I do in my life, what is the solution to all the problems that I'm encountering in my life? We don't want to take this path which is so easily given by the Lord. Let us uh, pay a little more attention. We live in a world where currently we have a lot of deficit of certain things and we have a surplus or an excess of certain things. So if you will be wondering what are the things that we'll have, we are having deficit and what are the things that we are having excess, the first things that we are having huge deficit in this world is the principles of religious life, dharma. People, when they come to you know, taking up to this path of devotion or taking up to this path of spirituality, the, you hardly will find someone who's interested in taking or knowing or understanding this path. There is a huge deficit to find someone who's knowledgeable, who can share this knowledge, who can bring that revolution in people's life. There is a verse in Bhagavatam which says, Tad bhag visargo janatagha viplavo yasmin pratishlokam abadhavati api Namani anantasya yasho amkitani yat shrnvanti gayanti grinanti sadhava. 
It's a very beautiful verse. I mean, sometimes we look around our people who are there surrounding us, we see that they're also struggling in their material life. They're also doing so many sinful activities. And we wonder, what is the solution? So when we hear this, simply hearing this Vedic literature, which are so powerful, Tad Bhaga Visargo Janatagha Biplava. Agha is sinful. People who are sinful in this material world, not knowing what is the real goal of life, busy in some materialistic pursuits, which is only ensuring they are more and more getting bound in this implications of karma. It, they can, it can bring a revolution in their heart. Tadvaga visargo janatagha viplava. All this misdirected aims that we have, the sinful uh, life that we are uh, leading, how do we come out of it? Tadvaga visargo janatagha viplava. Yasmin pratishloka mabaddhavati api. The shlokas, the verses or the texts of the Vedic literature are so powerful, it can bring an internal revolution in our heart. It will help us stop those sinful activities that we are indulging in. And not just us, the whole atmosphere will get purified. Just by chanting here, just by hearing, this entire atmosphere gets purified. So it's such a powerful thing. So there is a huge deficit of dharma. When you ask people to come to some uh, gathering, spiritual gathering, you'll find thousand excuses. I'm busy. I've got this thing. I've got this thing. I'm traveling. I'm not there. Thousand different. But you say there is a movie night. We'll, we'll have a house full, right? And people will be standing also. Like, Can I come in if you if you allow me to come? This is what is the culture we have. Unfortunately, we've forgotten how simply we can enjoy our life. You know what is the meaning of the word Rama? Any guess? What is the meaning of the word Rama? You are laughing something. I thought you have something. Anybody? Go for it. There's no right or wrong. If you give a wrong answer, there is only, you know, you can learn more that you'll remember this. So go for it. Don't be shy. Usually I say in the classes when we have, sometimes, you know, we have this uh, very nice, uh, some Carnatic um, musical performance where the singer will be singing very deeply engrossed, closing his eyes. Maybe he'll open his eyes a little bit and see the accompaniments, the people who are playing musical instruments and they will have some um, reciprocation, yeah, you're doing good, and this thing. And then they will close, finally people will get up and they'll clap. But this is not that kind of a session. When, when, when I'm asking a question, you can, ask, you can answer. It is not meant to be, time is there for the ending of this thing, and then we will get up and close. So what is the meaning of the word Rama? What do you think? He, that is his uh, characteristics, that is his, uh, that's his quality. But what is the meaning? At least one thing you will take home today, after this session, that you will say, if you meet anyone, what is the meaning of Rama? I know it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now the meaning of Rama is the source of all pleasure. We are all looking for happiness. We are all, we want to be happier. We are seeking that. Rama is the source of all pleasure. Imagine you bring Rama in your life. It's it's a huge change. And you will be you'll be genuinely blissful, not fake. Fake some kind of happiness, I'm happy, feeling happy, you know, putting some uh, this thing selfie in Instagram and Facebook, not that kind of happiness. The real happiness you can ex experience. So there is definite that there is a deficit of dharma and there is excess or surplus of adharma. You really don't have to do anything if you want to, you know, get exposed to the bad things in this world. If you, if you are, um, you know, if you say that, okay, I'll, I'll protect myself, I'll hide myself in one of the corners in some kind of a big house, and probably I'll not be exposed to any of those things. You, there is no way because this is what is the kali yuga, or the age of quarrel, dissension, and hypocrisy, where this is rampant. You open any mobile, anything, anywhere. Only thing that you'll find is a propaganda, how you can enjoy in this material world and how you can break all the religious principles and bring more havoc to your life. That thing they don't mention. That last part is not mentioned. So we get attracted and we do all of these things. So there is a huge deficit of dharma and there is a huge excess of adharma. There is a huge deficit of good qualities. You find people around you, they lack good qualities. People are ready to exploit each other. People are ready to cheat. People are ready to, you know, take advantage of the other other person, and there is a uh, there is a huge excess of bad qualities. You know, there we find uh, everywhere people are, you know, just self-centered, selfish, and they are trying to do something for their own benefits. There is a huge deficit of income. You know, people are worried of being laid off. 
and uh, the other time you know there is a huge increase of the prices right there is inflation so the situation in kaliuga <coughs> is actually like a double whammy right you know you you can't uh, you really can't you know get out of it there is no respite here so that is why when we come together and get a chance to participate in simple kirtan very joyful just chanting the names of the lord just hearing his pastimes are so wonderful just 10 15 minutes we'll spend 10 minutes this is a collection of uh, different postal stamps of india where they depict some of the pastimes of lord ram i want to have a quick uh, show of hand if you can identify each of these things which are there these are actually actual factual these are real things these are the stamps in india and tell me in quickly what are those uh, you know pictures depicting which pastimes they are depicting Anyone wants to go for the first, the top left corner? Yes, oh. Uncle. Uh, I'll start with the. No, I'm starting from the top left. If you know that, okay. Which one you know? I'll come to that. The middle one. Uh, the one with the. Uh, the thousand monkeys uh, loading up the bridge. This one. Yeah. Okay, I'll come to that. Anybody knows which is the first one? Okay, there are hands raised. Okay, let's see from there. Yeah, this is uh, Mother Sita Swamber, the marriage ceremony of Mother Sita, and how Lord Ram broke that uh, Shiva Dhanu. Okay, which is the next one? Oh, anybody knows? Uh, Rama is going to the dam. Ram is banished to forest by uh, Mother K K. She is here, and Dasarath is you know so grief stricken that he is not able to even look at his face giving this instruction. Very nice. What is this one? Okay, the first. Lord Ram is the brother of Bharat. Uh, like, I think he's taking the sandals from Lord Ram and he's going to teach them. Right, absolutely. That's the correct answer. So when Lord Ram was banished, uh, Bharat goes, makes an attempt to bring Ram back, and uh, when he fails, he finally um, uh, gets Ram's uh, paduka and brings it back. Anybody who knows this one? Crossing the river. Crossing the river. And who's this person? Kaivat, who is in Kaivat? Yeah, that's correct. Right. Kaivat, he is uh, helping Lord Ram cross this river. Very nice. What is this one? Jatai. Jatai. Okay. Jatai is trying to protect Mother Sita when she was being uh, abducted or kidnapped by Ravana. Which is this? What is this one? Patta Vishakam of Ram, Lord Ram. Okay. This one. Very nice. Savrik. Savrik. You know about Savrik? No, no, no. You, you got it. What, what is it? Uh, so she is one of the most uh, like worshipped devotee of Lord Ram. The most uh, she is a like she is a uh, the ideal devotee in a yeah. sense. Yeah. Why she is an ideal devotee? It's very interesting. Just just for your uh, knowledge sake, you know she. You can see in the picture she is very old lady, and she was instructed by her spiritual master. that one day lord ram will come to your ashram but he didn't mention which day and every single day sabri was waiting with great enthusiasm with great conviction that my lord will come today and she always used to pluck some ripe berries and she used to keep it for lord ram but uh, out of great love and uh, you know with great joy she was rejecting the ones which were sour and the ones that she was testing which are good she was giving it to lord ram even though it is uh, it is jhootha it is the remnant of uh, sabari but lord ram accepted those because of the love of sabari the conviction in the words of our spiritual master the conviction that the lord will come in our heart in our lives it's a very important thing which is exhibited by sabari what is this one who can say this ashokavati ashokavati ka mother hanuman could press uh, sita who was captive at uh, ravana's palace okay sankal is there which one what is that yeah they are they are making the bridge to cross the ocean the indian ocean okay anybody knows what is this one sanjeevni hanuman getting this mountain to save uh, lakshmana and what is this one Ram killing Ram in the final the battle. Very nice. So you all did very nicely. So you so basically even in Sri Mad Bhagavatam when uh, Sukadev Goswami is about to narrate uh, Ramayana, he says you must have heard. How many of you have read Ramayana? Which Ramayana did you read? 
Ah, that's not reading. We have seen drama and serial or movies, but we have not read. Most of us, many of us, may not have read, but we all know about this pastimes of Ram. Even I don't know. Have you have you heard of Lord Ram's pastimes? I've heard many Americans, many Western Westerners, they know about Lord Ram somehow because it is this pastime happened thousands, millions of years ago, but people are still familiar because it is very very powerful, very inspiring. All the characters in the Ramayana. They teach us some very important lessons, so we will spend some time in knowing that. Anybody can identify this? A little difficult. Which one? What is that? Ayodhya. Huh? Some, yeah. What is that? Ayodhya. This is Ayodhya. This is right. So this is Ayodhya, and this is the palace of uh, Dasarath Maharaj. The word Ayodhya literally means unconquered. Which cannot be conquered by any weapon or by any war. But is it true, really? Dasarath Maharaj, who ruled for 60,000 years, finally had to quit his life when his son was not even present there. Very, very, very painful that situation was. Nothing in this life is unconquered. Nobody can conquer over death, no matter where you are, how much powerful, how influential, how rich you are where you are trying to protect yourself and save yourself, still death comes. Dasarath Maharaj, as I was mentioning, ruled for 60,000 years. How many years? 60,000. We'll have a small quiz afterwards. So, <laughs> so Dasarath Maharaj ruled for 60,000 years, yet he had to quit his life. You know, when he was ruling for 60,000 years, there was one grief that he was having. He was not having any children. He was very, very, uh, he was very sad and morose that he doesn't have children. So in this material world also, we may have so many things, but there'll be something which we don't have and that will haunt us. It'll ha haunt us and we will be thinking how, what to do and how do, how do we get that thing? Bhagavatam mentions in the sixth canto of a king who, whose name was, uh, I'll come to his name, maybe I'll ask you. He was a king who married one wife thinking that he'll have a son. He didn't have a child. Then he married to another one. He still didn't have. He went on married and he married one crore, which is 100 million wives. The first crore pati. Right. <laughs> but still he could not have son. Finally he got a son and that son that he got, his name was Harsha Shoka, who is the cause of his happiness as well as lamentation. You know, you see, what happened was his son was, you know, he, he got a child, but the child didn't live for a long time and he died. And he, was, he started lamenting. That's why his name was Harsha Shoka. In this material world, no situation is permanently happy. No situation is permanently sad. We experience both. Our lives are so designed, it is so orchestrated, that we have to go through our quota of happiness and sadness. There is no, there is no respite to this. But what is important is, if we can figure out how to live life in a God-centered way, and that will bring us the true genuine happiness which we are seeking. So this Dasarath, even though he lived for 60,000 years, he had to quit his life when his beloved son Ram was not present. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, the next five minutes, I'll tell you some of the very interesting characteristics of these people. Can, can somebody help me identify who are these people here? Where, uh, Ram Sita is very easy. Where is Hanuman? Anuman is also easy. So you got three right. So who are these three? We know it's all Bharat Lakshman Satrugna, but who's who? <laughs> I think the bright side is Lakshmana. This this is Lakshmana? This one? Okay, this is Lakshmana. This is left, okay. This is Satrugna. This is Bharata, okay. This is Satrugna. Okay, any other answer anybody has? How can you say they all look the same? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unless we know why they are standing at a particular position, they are all same. Only the Ram's color is different, that's greenish. But otherwise, you know, they all look the same. But you, you came very close. Lakshmana was right. But this is Bharat. This is Satrugna actually. And there is a reason why they stand in this particular position. But I am not going to talk about that today. But Bhagavatam mentions there is a there is a quadruple expansion of Vishnu and there is a particular position order in which they stand. 
I want to talk about something which is very interesting based on just their names. So, does anybody know um, what is the meaning of the word Lakshmana? Lakshmi means wealth. Lakshmi? Means wealth. Yeah, but what is Lakshmana? Is it related? Good guess. It is actually Lakshmi Sampanna Iti Lakshmana, who has got, who is endowed with wealth. Who's got the who's got the blessings of having uh, richness? But the question is, if you think in Lakshmana's life, he really didn't have a lot of wealth. When Lord Ram was banished to go to the forest for 14 years, he accompanied. Actually, there was no need for him to accompany because he was not asked to go to the forest. But he did accompany to go with Lord Ram. What is the wealth that Lord? Uh, what is the wealth that Lakshmana is having that he's called Lakshmana or Lakshmi Sampanna? Any guess? What is the wealth that he is having? Love. Okay. It's a good guess. It's an intelligent guess. It's the right guess. Actually, the wealth that Lakshmana has, for which he is ready to pay any sacrifice, is this opportunity to engage in devotional service to the Lord. That is the biggest wealth. That wealth is so powerful and so valuable. Nothing in this material world can even match. And he's convinced about that. That is the reason he's not even he's not even bothered to take this austerity of going to the forest, accompanying Lord Ram, and you know, taking all kinds of things. Do you know Lakshmana for the 14 years of Ram's exile never even slept? He was constantly guarding Lord Ram. Constantly, every single moment. Not even he, he didn't even sleep for one moment, one second. It's impossible. Why is it so much of austerity? Because in return, what you get when you engage in devotional service is the love of God, which is very, very valuable. It is not available anywhere in this material world. You know, in our uh, temple, sometimes we have uh, a lot of youngsters who come for different uh, programs, different uh, uh, sessions that we have. After this uh, session, the most uh, lucrative thing for them, they'll be waiting for when the prasadam will be served. Right? That's the best part. Everybody. You know, whatever philosophy you say, that's good. Kirtan, they may appreciate a little bit, but the thing that they appreciate the most is prasadam. So we have different serving teams, different people who volunteer to serve. So we will have different items. If you're not familiar with some Indian items, just, just hear, hear me out. Rice, you're familiar, right? There'll be some lentil, some dal kind of a thing. Then there'll be some paneer sabji, okay? And then there'll be some sweet, some gulab jamun or something. So the people who are standing in the beginning, they will serve rice and dal nicely. But they'll be looking for the paneer. Paneer is, you know, very, very special, right? So they'll be giving the gravy. As, you know, the line progresses more, they'll be giving gravy, but the paneers will be remaining. Why? Because they're worried by the time, you know, their turn comes, what if everything is over? <laughs> gulab jamun also, you'll find the gulab jamuns are kept. The sugar syrup is being served nicely. So when we observed this, what we did was, we will pack a plate of prasadam for all of them. Nicely packed, full paneer sabji, two, three gulab jamuns, rice and dal, and we will keep it next to them. So they'll keep looking at them. Yeah, mera kota hai. It's my, my thing is there. Then when they come, they'll nicely serve. Right? Similarly, in life, when we understand the biggest wealth is the wealth of engaging in devotional service. Lakshmana did not mind going through that austerity going to the forest and serving the Lord because he knows this is the most important thing. He was dead sure that, you know, if I have that, when you see that the prasadam is kept, I am going to get the love of Godhead in return. I don't mind taking any austerity. There will be challenges. There will be difficulties in life. There will be so many problems. There will be so many people who will tell why you have to go and do all these things. But this is not the time. When you become old, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, you can think of doing that. Not right. We should know what is the real goal of life. What is the real wealth? Lakshmana exhibits that in his life. It's a very interesting pastime. You saw that, you know, do you know when Lord Ram went to the forest, whom did he meet first? Nishan. Huh? Yeah. What? Who said? Nishan. Nishan. Okay. Who is he? He was a friend of Lord Ram. Who, what, what was his qualification? Who, who was he? He was the king of this tribe. He was a tribal king. His name was Guha. Guha. So Guha actually gave all this, you know, the bark of the trees for wearing them, for, for wearing for uh, Ram and Sita when they met him. He was the first person who Lord Ram met. 
so he offered lord ram to sleep on some straw bed and lakshman looking at that his heart was like he, he was feeling so devastated he was just crying his heart was breaking out but lord ram and sita without battling their eyelids they just slept when they slept lakshman because he had taken the vow that he would protect lord ram always he was you know carrying his sword and he was going around lord ram and lord uh, mother sita now this was seen by guha from a distance so guha when he saw that uh, uh, lakshmana is going around with a sword in his mind he thought that maybe lakshman has got some evil intention he has come with ram and sita now he wants to finish them alone nobody is there he'll finish them that's his idea that's why he is keeping the sword so he immediately started you know he pointed his arrow to lakshman he was also going around in a circle now who told guha that lakshman is having this intention who told nobody told in his mind he thought right in his mind he got this doubt maybe you know evil uh, this uh, lakshmana has got this evil intention my responsibility is to protect ram and sita so he was going around in a circle now guha's uh, army guha's soldiers they saw it from a distance that guha is pointing you know bow and arrow to lakshman so they thought are guha our king he has got some uh, vested interest probably he wants to become the king he wants to kill ram and sita we should protect our beloved ram and sita from guha so they are pointing you know arrows to guha and they are also going around in a circle and so what is happening lakshman is going around in a circle with the sword guha is going around with a even a pointed uh, bow and arrow 